everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update this morning. I hope you're doing great and we'll be taking a look at what is going on across the North Atlantic as well as the Eastern Pacific. So there are two systems over in the Eastern Pacific that we want to pay attention to, Tropical Storm Lydia as well as Invest 99. We expect it to eventually become something over there, but then in the Atlantic we know that there is Philippe, uh, those tropical storm conditions bearing down on Bermuda and uh, that is likely to continue continue through today before the system eventually makes its way up into parts of the northeastern uh, section of North America and then there are a couple of tropical waves out there and another one will be emerging this weekend which may develop as we head into next week. So let's go ahead and kickstart things looking at these satellites and here we can see that across the Atlantic there's Philippe on that activity in association with the cyclone and even some uh, rainfall activity across sections of the Caribbean as well. So uh, there there's that tropical wave in the eastern part of the basin and that could even help to induce some additional rainfall activity for some areas as we're going to be heading through today. And additionally, as we look out in the main development region, there is that next tropical wave. So we see a lot of convection in association with it. Now, as this is going to be propagated westward and as we head into next week, if it manages to sustain enough activity, then it could definitely bring yet another rainfall increase to especially eastern islands off of the Caribbean. So that is definitely something that we'll want to watch out for for next week. Of course, I'll keep you guys posted on it. Let's take a closer look at the region and here we are. So we're seeing all this activity uh, across the eastern Caribbean. So that tropical wave has entered the basin and uh, some of this is even feeding up north into Philippe. So some of this activity, all this moisture is still feeding up into the cyclone. But that tropical wave is likely to induce some additional rainfall activity for some areas. And uh, even for the ABC Islands, there has been an increase in rainfall activity this week. So I have been seeing the comments. I know you guys are really happy about it. And so am I for you because it has been so hot and dry there hasn't been anything substantial so finally there is something to help with the heat and uh, those drought conditions and so let's go on to the rainfall map from the euro model and there we can see that uh, it's getting pretty colorful for some areas so especially when we see those oranges reds burgundies that is indicative of a lot of heavy rainfall so across some parts of central america mexico going to guatemala maybe not as much for belize but there could still be some heavy downpours at times going to el salvador and Honduras near the Pacific coast of Nicaragua down to Costa Rica and spots in Panama. So there could be some heavy rainfall across these areas as we head to northern South America, Venezuela, uh, going to Colombia as well. There's likely to be some heavy rainfall across many areas and potentially for sections of northern, uh, the northern Guyanas, especially for Guyana. So uh, Guyana, Suriname, French Guyana may experience a bit of rainfall activity as we head through today, potentially the ABC Islands as well. And take a look at Trinidad, Tobago, even going to Grenada, the Grenadines. So there could be some substantial rainfall in parts of these islands. Heading further up north, potentially for some spots in the uh, Leeward Islands as well. Sections of Guadeloupe going to Montserrat, even for St. Kitts and Nevis, and then up into portions of uh, Anguilla going to St. Martin. There could be some uh, substantial rainfall increase, maybe a heavy downpour at some point through today. But for other areas such as St. Barthelemy, St. Ba, St. Eustatius, going to Antigua, Barbados, Buda, uh, maybe the eastern side of Guadeloupe and down into Dominica, Martinique, uh, St. Lucia. There might not be as much rainfall activity, maybe a more decent chance as we head to St. Vincent as well as Barbados. For most of the Virgin Islands, much not expected. But uh, there is that chance of some rainfall activity, especially for St. Croix and even uh, the Virgin Islands of Puerto Rico and Puerto Rico itself. There could be some activity as we head over into Hispaniola. We see some of those orange and red spots. So as all that moisture makes its way in, it is going to be encountering uh, the mountainous terrain of Hispaniola. And that actually helps to induce some more rainfall because we're talking about warm, moist air. And then once it is going to be meeting on that mountain barrier, it has nothing to do but rise but as it gains altitude or height temperatures decrease which leads to the formation of clouds and eventually once clouds get saturated there is rainfall so that is kind of the process that we're going to be seeing happening 
and then uh, some parts of Jamaica may experience some heavy rainfall, especially going up to northern parishes and some spots in Cuba as well. Not as much as we head over into the uh, over into the Cayman Islands, but there might be a passing shower or even a brief thunderstorm popping up this afternoon. Look into Florida, not much expected. Going to the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, same story there as well. Now let's go ahead and talk about Philippe. So we're looking at the cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center, and the storm remains pretty disorganized, by the way. So uh, it is not the most organized tropical storm out there and it is continuing to sustain those winds of 50 miles per hour and now moving to the north northeast at 18 miles per hour so it's moving faster and faster here and uh, you can't see the island because that s is covering it but a tropical storm warning is still in effect for bermuda and as the system is going to be making its way by potentially i wouldn't say that it can't make landfall because it looks as though it will try to do so but regardless those tropical storm conditions those gusty winds, periods of heavy rainfall, and those rough seas, maybe even some storm surge as well, will all be possible if they're not already happening. So you can let me know what's going on there if you're from Bermuda. But afterwards, the system is expected to become post-tropical, maybe by tomorrow afternoon. And then what is left of it will be making its way uh, into parts of the U.S. going up into sections of uh, maybe Atlantic Canada. So this is to track the center of the storm, not the size. And the usual when these tropical cyclones transition into post tropical or extra tropical cyclones the wind feel broadens so more areas experience those tropical storm force winds but then eventually as we head into Sunday there could even be some periods of heavy rain for some areas and then further up north into Canada whatever is left of it could produce some snowfall there so that is what is anticipated from Philippe over the course of the coming few days now we're talking about this next disturbance which is highlighted so uh, a tropical wave will be coming off the African coast as we head to this weekend and we could see some development and notice that, uh, that this area is now highlighted in orange so that means the formation chance is now uh, medium so it is at a medium 50% chance of seeing development and this chance is continuing to increase. Models have been pretty consistent on seeing something actually try to form out there. So we'll see if that actually happens. But it seems as though this is going to be remaining out to sea and not continuing toward the Caribbean. However, we definitely want to keep watch as I usually say because uh, sometimes these systems have a mind of their own. But it is seemingly pretty likely that this thing is going to be turning up and missing the Caribbean. But regardless, I'll be keeping you posted. And so now we want to hop over into the Eastern Pacific. So we're looking at this graphic from the NHC. That's one right there in yellow, unlikely to develop into anything. But then there are those two other systems. There's Tropical Storm Lydia as well as Invest 99E. So let's briefly talk about Lydia first. Here we can see the cone forecast of the storm. It is just below hurricane strength. So maximum sustained winds are up to 70 miles per hour. And it is moving to the west-northwest at 5 miles per hour. Now take a look at this turn expected so as we're going to be heading into the latter part of next week it could make its way into sections of Mexico bringing tropical storm conditions and it is not going to be maintaining hurricane intensity uh, once it arrives there because it is expected to become a hurricane but conditions won't be highly conducive to allow for it to actually hold that status so it's going to be fighting some shear over there and uh, eventually the system is expected to weaken back to a tropical storm however it could bring life-threatening impacts to Mexico and eventually if it follows through with what is expected now we will see some watches and eventual warnings being posted and then and there is this next area to watch which is invest 99e it is called an invest because it is an area of investigation it's being watched closely for development as you can see it is highlighted in red so there's a high formation chance of it and models have been pretty consistent about the system making its curve into mexico so let's go on to some model data very quickly let's look at the track guidance here we can see it's all models expecting that this will be turning into mexico some showing it's all uh, that curve sooner rather than later we'll definitely have to wait and see and then whatever is left off the system could make its way into the gulf and try to form into something over there but uh, models are not expecting that there will be anything too strong however even with a substantial rainfall increase there could be a lot of heavy rainfall which may trigger flooding across portions of the gulf coast taste is looking as though florida is going to be the target of whatever tries to develop in the gulf but the, uh, the national hurricane center has not marked an area over there uh, they may do 
so sooner or later, we'll have to wait and see for that, but models have been pretty consistent on seeing something try to form in the Gulf. So I'll keep you posted as usual. And that is it for this update. So I hope you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I can. And as always, remember to be weatherwise.